of the things I love to do when I'm out in the woods is make things. And over the years, I've made all manner of different things. Uh, I've started off with spoons. I've made cooksers, um, noggin cups. All different containers. I started off like everybody else with my little bushcraft knife, um, probably an axe, a folding saw, and, and then I, I progressed onto a, a spoon knife. But over the years, one of the things I found is actually there are a few other tools um, that would be useful while I'm in the woods. So, what I've gradually put together is my own little bushcraft toolkit and this is the little kit that I carry um, it's a basic little tool roll now rather than take lots of big full-size tools what I've tried to do is make it so it's small and light but it's still really useful the idea for this came from the old um, chef's knife roll that I used to carry when I was a trainee chef and it had all the bits and pieces that I needed in uh, for a day at work. So I had my chef's knife and peelers and a pallet knife, um, a sharpening steel, all of those things contained in this little roll. And I thought, well, that'd be a really good idea for my bushcraft stuff. The actual tools that I want, well, it's a collection of tools that I've put together over the years and um, they've come from various sources. Some are bits of kit that I've just bought from uh, various cutlery suppliers, um, others are items that have been gifted to me, um, other ones are items that I've actually made. The roll keeps everything nice and safe so there's no sharp edges while it's in my rucksack. Opening it up, it's got a protective cover over the top. And inside, I've got a range of different tools that I'm likely to use when I'm in the woods. So what I'll do is, I'll just run through each of the items in here. Number one, a little Mora knife. And this is a, a little short bladed, narrow pointed um, craft knife. And it's perfect for doing detail work and yes, my bushcraft knife can do a lot of that but for the very fine stuff or if I need to carve very tight curves into projects then these little mowers with a very narrow point are absolutely ideal. Now I could just stash this straight in the tool roll but while I'm working um, I like to have somewhere that I can put my knife if I stop rather than rest it on the ground it needs to be stashed somewhere where it's nice and safe so hence it's got its own little birch scabbard that comes with it. My next item, uh, this is a, a little wood gouge um, and it, it's not one of the, the purpose-built ones. Um, this is something that's been recycled. Um, there's a, an old tool shop uh, near where I live and if I need bits and pieces um, I'll go out and buy it. And this was a, a full-size chisel and what I've done is I've shortened it down um, to make it more portable. So I've shortened the handle, it doesn't need a big full length handle for what I'm going to do with it, um, and I shortened down the end of the gouge as well. And this is perfect for when you've got to scoop out the centre of things like nogging cups if you're making those. Next up, my spoon knife. Um, and this is one of two, but this is the one that I normally carry. This is the most useful size for me. And again, if I'm scooping out the bowls on spoons, um, or if I'm making a cooksa and I, I need to gouge out uh, the wood from the center area, this is absolutely perfect. Um, this one's a custom one, uh, and it was made for me by Duncan down at Dorset Woodland Blades, I think it's called. And, um, he gifted this to me years ago um, and it's, it's been absolutely superb and um, I always <coughs> smile when I use it because it's just a joy 
to use. Something that often gets forgotten is um, a little pencil. And this one can be any pencil at all, but it's useful for marking things out on wood so that you've actually got a guide to work to. Yes, we can do it just by picturing it in our brain and then trying to trans <coughs> transport that onto the wood, but it's a lot easier if we draw what we're actually gonna carve onto the wood first. Next up, this is a, a little hand drill. I suppose it's a little bit like a, uh, a cross between a corkscrew and a drill. And it's very good for starting holes. Now, on some of my projects, um, I might want to put a, a lanyard hole through. And what I normally do is use a bow drill and I will bow um, a hole through uh, the hand of, of the particular project that I'm working on. But to get me started, I normally use this. And it's a really, really useful little item. It could also be used for tapping birch. Um, so it's a, it's a good multi-purpose little item to carry in my tool roll. Well, a little chisel. And again, this is a, a reclaimed item. Uh, I went to my old tool store and um, saw what they had. And they had some old chisels that were a bit chipped and broken and looking a bit short. So um, I got this one. Uh, I bought some cheap handles, little baby handles, took the original handle off, tapped this one on. And what I use it for is if I need to do joints on, on things, so mortise type joints uh, while I'm out in the woods, if I'm making camp furniture, um, I can use it for that. Something else it gets used for is if I'm removing birch bark, um, or bark of any type for, for projects, um, sometimes you'll get a little knotty bit. And this is really good for just pushing in level with the bark and then just prying and lifting it off. Um, so it, it does get quite a lot of use. This is a little three-sided awl. It's an old silversmith's file, again from my, my little tool shop. And um, <clears throat> all I did with this uh, was I put it in the fire to re-temper it. And then using my sharpening stone, I sharpened the end. What this allows me to do is, because it's got three sides, three cutting edges, is when I bore a hole in something and I, uh, I twist it, it actually cuts a hole. If I'm working with bark, then when you push a hole through it, if you don't don't cut the hole, which this does, if you just push through, then you'll get a linear split starts to form. With this, it prevents it happening. Last up, a tiny little right angle gouge. And all this gets used for is embellishments. So if I want to put a pattern into the end of a spoon or the handle on a cup, or even put um, the hair effect uh, on beards when I'm carving up wood wizards, I use this. And this came from a pack, and they're as cheap as anything, uh, very lightweight, and... Um, I could do it with the point of my knife, but this makes it a whole lot easier. So those are the tools that I carry in my little tool roll. It doesn't weigh much, but it makes life so much easier, and it means uh, that I can turn out even better projects when I'm out in the woods. And I would suggest that anybody has a go at putting one together. As I said, Need and Cost the Earth, most of my tools came from the tool shop uh, that sells old um, house clearance type tools and vintage tools. And I think the three of these, um, in fact, I think there were four when I originally got it, um, I think cost me about six pounds. So they don't cost a fortune. It takes a little bit of time to resharpen them and get them back up to what you actually need um, but it's well worth the time and the effort. So those are the tools that I carry uh, out when I'm doing a bit of bushcraft in the woods and I want to make things. Yeah I've made uh, a proper little roll to roll mine up in but you could just get by with an old canvas webbing patch. 
The tools that go inside, as I said, they don't cost a fortune. Yes, it requires a little bit of work, but hey, it's well worth the effort. If you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, then remember, hit that thumbs up button and remember to like us. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and as always, remember to share it. I've been Neil and until next time, stay safe.